Hi everyone! How are you? Happy Friday! <laughs> it's so good to see everybody. You guys have no idea how much I look forward to this every single week. I just love getting to hang out with all of you and make art together. So let's get to it. You might have noticed that I don't have my big easel here with me today. I moved it aside so I could bring over my drafting table because I want to do some drawing today. I've got myself a big piece of paper all ready to go. So if you want to go grab whatever art supplies you have, that will be just fine. So don't worry about getting anything special. You can make art with anything. <laughs> so go grab what, what you can and then we are going to get started. I've got a lot that I want to do today. So how are you guys? Did you have a good week? Did you do anything creative this week? I've been doing a lot of painting. I finished up some paintings. I'm working on illustrating a children's book. So I have been busy. How about you? Hope that you are finding all kinds of wonderful creative things to do. And speaking of children's books, I picked up this wonderful children's book that I wanted to share with all of you guys today. I don't know if any of you have seen this one before. It's called Sofia Valdez Future Prez. It is an awesome book for everyone of every age and I love to read and I've always been inspired by books. Especially when I was younger, I loved to read books and then make artwork about the books. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to read you the story and then we're going to make some artwork, okay? So get comfortable. We're gonna have a little story time first and then art time. Let me scoot a little closer so you guys can see the pictures really well. The pictures are an important part. So this book is written by Andrea Beatty and illustrated, that's the artist who made all the pictures, by David Roberts, okay? And it's Sofia Valdez, Future Prez. It's a really good book. I'm gonna take off this cover because they always tend to fall off when I'm holding them up here for you guys. Okay, are we ready? Hold it so you can see. Sophia was a baby who got things done, helping her family before she turned one. Hold it here so you can all see. She and Abuelo went out every week to help elderly friends around Blue River Creek who couldn't get out and about on their own and with no place to gather were stuck home alone. Kind of, I'm looking at it backwards, sorry. <laughs> Raking the leaves, taking pets for a walk, or just dropping by for a treat and a talk, Sophia Valdez did as much as she could for her family and friends and her whole neighborhood. A dreamer, a doer, a real life go-getter, most people like good, but Sophia liked better. Sophia sounds pretty awesome to me. Okay, let's see here. <laughs> Each morning, Abuelo walked Sophie to class. They walked home again along Blue River Pass. Making plans, munching cookies, Abuelo and girl, except for that Tuesday when Pup saw the squirrel. With a howl, Pup took off, racing all through the town, over, under, beneath, and around. Sophia scrambled to try to keep up with the hollering man and the bellowing Pup. Up the squirrel ran to the top of a hill, 
made of leftover junk for the local landfill. They reached the tip top of that mountain of trash, which jiggled and broke with an ear splitting crash. That's a big pile of trash, huh? Look at all of that stuff in there. Can you imagine drawing all of that? Down they all tumbled and hit with a thud on a moldy old pumpkin surrounded by mud. Ouch, cried Abuelo. He struggled to stand. A dangerous mess, he said, grasping her hand. The next day, Sophia walked to school solo, but it wasn't the same without her abuelo. This is not right, declared young Sophia, who glared at Mount Trashmore and got an idea. The very next morning, at half past dawn, she planted a sign at the front of the lawn. She stood back and smiled, and Pup gave a bark, and the sign says, Get rid of Mount Trashmore. Let's build a new park. Each of her neighbors had something to say about benches and fountains and places to play, meeting spots, gardens, a basket for bees, a rubber duck pond, and a kiosk for cheese. <laughs> she drew every thought on her map of the park, which was perfectly perfect by a quarter till dark. She drifted to sleep in her soft, cozy bed. Then bam, she woke up when a thought smacked her head. Her heart skipped a beat as she realized each one of her neighbors had said, let me know when it's done. They all thought Sophia could build it alone, but how could one girl do so much on her own? The weight of that thought made her tender heart ache as night thunder growled and she lay wide awake. Then dawn brought a storm and the gloomy sky wept and the heartsick Sophia finally slept. Abuelo <laughs> Abuelo baked cookies when Sophie got up. He gave her a bag full and sneaked one to Pup. He blinked back a tear as he hugged his Sophia. For courage, he whispered, te amo mi vida. Sophia's knees wobbled. She felt weak inside. She looked at his ankle and quite nearly cried. Though she didn't feel brave or courageous at all, Sophia Valdez went to face City Hall. There it is, City Hall. The mayor's office sent her to room 401, the Blue River Creek Department of Fun which sent her downstairs to room 302, the office of duck ponds and cool things to do, to the office of monkeys, the department of cheese, the division of fountains and meetings and bees. Then down to the basement, so musty and cramped, where all the town's papers were sorted and stamped. And that's where the clerk said what no one else did. You can't build a new park. You're only a kid. The words smacked Sophia deep down in her heart. Her plan was kiboshed 
before it could start. I think, said Sophia, I think that law's wrong. But her second grade voice didn't sound very strong. The clerk said, clearly it cannot be done. Do you have any questions? Sophia said, one. If you were me, and if I was you, and he was your grandpa, what would you do? I, well, said the clerk. Then she said nothing at all. She thought and she thought. Then she sent out a call to every employee throughout City Hall. The entire government of Blue River Creek crammed into the office to hear Sophie speak, but her words jumbled up and her cheeks turned bright red as a dozen emotions rushed into her head. Her heart beat so loudly she thought it would crack. The crowd leaned in closer. Sophia leaned back. Then her arm brushed the edge of the old cookie sack. And that was the moment when Sophia first knew being brave means doing the thing you must do. Though your heart cracks with fear, though you're just in grade two. She took a deep breath, looked the mayor in the eye, and though her knees wobbled, she held her head high. Sophia started talking. She spelled out her plan and why it all mattered and how it began. And once she got rolling, she had lots to say about meeting spots, monkeys, and places to play and other ideas for things they could do to help the town elders and other folks too. She had thoughts on the library, thoughts on the zoo, and perhaps a way to combine the two. And... All right, cried the mayor. Go start a petition. If the town wants a new park, we'll form a commission. And so young Sophia got right to work with some help from her family and pup and the clerk. Then others joined in, not all, but a few, like Miss Leela Greer and the kids in grade two. There were hearings and surveys and taxes to figure, then bulldozers, cranes, and a blue bigger digger. <laughs> They all built that park, that's how it got done, with the hard work of, by, and for everyone. But it began with the dream of one person, just one, who laced up her shoes and then led the way to help Blue River Creek get a new place to play. Now every evening till long after dark, the town comes together at Citizens Park. They all hold this truth to be self-evident that Sophia Valdez could grow up to be president. Until then, Sophia, that real life go-getter, helps Blue River Creek get better and better. The end. I hope you like that story. I think that is such a cool book for so many reasons. I love the way she gathered everybody's ideas. She drew it all into a big map and then she presented it and made it happen. And that's exactly how dreams work. If you have a dream, it's great to have a dream, but then you have to make a plan and you have to go make it happen. So that's what we're going to do today. I want you guys to imagine if you could create your own park, what would it be like? What would you want to have in your park? And it could be an amusement park. There could be roller coasters. It could be a theme park. 
It could be anything you want. It could be your own version of Disney World <laughs> with your name instead of Disney. Whatever you want, that's what I want you to draw today. And I'm going to design a theme park too, or a park, some kind of park. And we'll just be creative and have fun. And then maybe someday we can make our own parks. Huh? What do you think? All right, I'm gonna get my pencil and start sketching. You guys get ready too. You don't have to draw the same thing as me. I want you to use your imagination and be creative today, okay? I'm going to think about all the things that I like to do and like to play outside at the park. And that's what I'm going to put in mine. All right, let's go. Whatever you can imagine you can draw, just picture it and start drawing the shapes. Ready? Let's do this. All right, I am gonna start by drawing, I think a big Ferris wheel, which is a big circle. I'm gonna put some lines through it. And then I'm gonna just put some little carriages that you can ride in. I like Ferris wheels. <laughs> I like being able to go up really high and see all over the place and then go back down and see all my friends and family waiting for me down there. So that's what I'm gonna draw. Oh, do you guys see my, my cool eraser? <laughs> Just in case you make a mistake, it's good to have one of these. This is called a kneaded eraser because when it gets dirty, you can just knead it <laughs> and mess it up and get rid of all the pencil uh, lead in there. Not that you guys ever mess up. <laughs> There's really no such thing as a mistake when it comes to art. It's just you keep going until you like it. a lot of little carriages, huh? <laughs> this would be a fun ride, I think. Well, what should my park be called? What should your park be called? I know a lot of us right now have to spend a lot of time inside or you know, not, with, not able to hang out with a lot of our friends and go to places like amusement parks and stuff right now. So art is a really great way to be able to use your imagination and be able to pretend that you are there. Sometimes when I draw or paint something, it's almost like I get to actually travel there, at least in my mind. And so as you guys are drawing your own park today, I want you to imagine that you are there you are hanging out with all of your friends and you're having a blast, okay? And if you imagine it, you're gonna feel it. Draw another circle like that. And then I guess I'd probably better put something to hold it up. Give it some legs. <laughs> All right, there is my Ferris wheel. How's your drawing coming? Have you drawn something yet in your park? What would you like to play with? What do you like to do when you go to a park? I think I'm gonna draw a roller coaster next in the background. So I'm gonna draw the track like this and have it go way down and then maybe it comes up and goes in a loop like that whoa <laughs> have you ever ridden a roller coaster that went in a big loop and went upside down i think they are pretty fun usually they have tracks so i'm going to draw little lines on mine one of the things that I thought about when I was reading that book was a story from my own childhood when I was, I think about three or four years old, there was 
uh, in the town that I lived in, there was this old kind of abandoned building that was on this big lot. And so the mayor of the town asked everybody to uh, come up with ideas for what they should put in that space. And so I was, I was only, I think, three years old, but I had the idea that it should be an amusement park. And I wanted to invent my own park and come up with the plans for it. And I wanted it to be like my own Disney World. <laughs> so I had my mom help me. We, at that time, we didn't have computers. We had these things called typewriters <laughs> because Mr. Paul is old. <laughs> so I had my mom help me on the typewriter and we typed a letter to the mayor. I typed it, but she just kind of helped me. And I told the mayor about my plan. And then a couple weeks later, I got a letter in the mail that said the mayor liked my idea and he liked my letter so much that he wanted to meet with me. And so he invited me and my family to come downtown to the mayor's office. And so I got all dressed up in my suit and I had my plans. I made my drawings of what I thought the park should look like. And then I thought I would win him over. I made him a painting of some of my favorite Disney characters that I could give him as a gift. And that was going to be my way of talking him into my idea. <laughs> and so we went and we got to meet with the mayor. I have some pictures of me sitting at the mayor's desk in my little suit. And I, I pitched my idea to him and I said, this is what I want to do. And he really liked it. He had me meet with the city planner. That's the person who kind of figures out the construction of things. And he showed me how he makes blueprints and how I got to sit with him and learn all about that. Um, it was a really cool experience. And so, you know, you are never too young to have a good idea and to make sure that other people take it seriously. Now, that doesn't mean that just because you have a good idea, everybody's going to be excited about it and get on board right away. Sometimes, just like what happened to Sophia, sometimes people say no, or they say, I don't think that's a good idea. But if you really believe in it, if you know in your heart that it's a good idea, then you can find a way, find somebody else to help you make it happen. That's what I always believed. It doesn't, doesn't mean everything is easy, but you can do it if you really believe in it, I, I think. All right, I better put a horizon line in here. Do you guys know what a horizon line is? The horizon line is where the ground touches the sky. So just so that my amusement park isn't floating in the air, although if you want your amusement park to be floating in the air, you go for it. But I'm gonna put, let's see, I'll put the land right about here. Better put some supports on my roller coaster. These are just some little poles to help hold it up. Now, even if you don't know how to perfectly draw your idea, that's okay because a plan is really just a way to get down the ideas. See, that's why I'm not doing it as a big painting this week or anything. We're just work, working with pencil and paper and it doesn't have to be perfect. This is just about getting down your idea. Okay, so don't worry if you don't know exactly how to draw something. You saw the sketches that Sophia took to show at City Hall. They weren't perfect, but they got the idea across. That's what's important. So whatever comes into your head that you think would be fun to have at your park, then that's what you should do. Okay, don't worry if you don't know how to draw it perfectly. Now, I think in my park, I want to have a castle in the background. So I'm going to draw a big castle back here. I've always liked fairy tales and things like that. So maybe a big tower. That's where we can all hang out when you guys come to my park. 
and we can just watch everybody out there playing. Of course, we'll probably eventually want to go out and join them, I would imagine. That looks good. What else do we need? What else would you like to do if you could do anything in the world at your own park? What would you like? I think I would like to take a hot air balloon ride. I have never been in a hot air balloon before, but that doesn't mean I can't draw it. Okay. Put some stripes on here. This park is getting complicated, huh? It's looking kind of fun. Hmm, do we need anything else or you think it looks good? Maybe I'll just put a little path coming from the front, taking us all the way back, all the way back here to the entrance of the castle. And when I draw my path, I'm going to have it get bigger as it comes closer to us. Like that. Draw some grass. Some flowers, because it's a park. Hmm. And I think we need a sign. Put a sign right here. And I think I'm going to call my park Art World. Because it's a place where you can go and be creative and use your imagination and have fun, just like when we make art. Yes? All right. I'm happy with my park. So I'm going to erase a few of the lines that I don't want, and then I'm going to go over the lines that I do like with my pen. You don't have to do it that way. You can do whatever you want because like always, you use whatever materials you've got, okay? It doesn't matter as long as you're having fun and being creative, but I just wanna be able to see my lines really well. So I'm gonna go over them with this pen and then do a little bit of coloring, maybe. Not everywhere, but just in a few important places so it gets the idea across. I can't wait to see all of your drawings. I hope that you guys will share them with us on social media. Just post a picture and you can tag Palenque Arts. Um, you could tag art with Mr. Paul, wherever. Just make sure we get to see it because it makes me so excited every week when I get to see how creative all of you are. You're a very creative group. You're creative in a lot of ways, not just with visual art, but with music, with dancing, with performing, with writing, all of that is creative, all of that is art. Mr. Paul drew a lot of lines today. <laughs> I got really excited planning this park. It makes me want to go there. If I was there, I would probably be sitting right here in this very top little carriage, riding on the Ferris wheel. Where would you guys be in your park? When you draw it, think about that. You could even draw yourself in there if you want. You could draw your friends too. Think about who you would want to go to the park with. And you could even draw them in your artwork if you want to. You don't have to. You can just leave it empty, too, and just imagine. That's the good thing about art. 
There's no rules. You can do whatever you want. Okay. Getting very serious here about this. <laughs> Don't want to mess up. All right, let me go over my horizon line. And the thing that I like about doing a drawing like this is that it makes it feel like you could actually kind of walk right into this scene. And a, one of the ways that you can do that whenever you make a piece of art is to think about giving it a background, a middle ground, let's see, background, <laughs> middle ground, and foreground. Foreground is what's closest to you, middle ground is what's in the middle, and background is what's far, far away. And if you put all three of those in your artwork, then it's going to make it feel like it has depth, like it's deep, like you could walk right into it. And that's a cool thing. When you look at a painting or a drawing or even a photograph, look for foreground, middle ground, background. Can you guys hear my Sharpie? <laughs> it's making a really loud squeaky noise. I don't ever, oh, there it is. <laughs> I don't ever want you guys to think that you have to draw exactly what I draw. I would much rather you use your imagination and draw whatever you see in your head. That's what I'm interested in. I want to know, I want to know your ideas. So whatever you see me drawing here is just an example to kind of get your, get your imagination started. But don't, don't just copy me. Do what, do what comes into your head. Add something that makes it unique to you and what you love. Since I love art, that's why I called it Art World. Maybe you can think of something that you love. Well, I hope you love art too. <laughs> but think of something to make it really special just for you. Because it's your park. You can have anything you want. It could be full of your favorite candy. It could have trees and flowers made out of candy. <laughs> If you like video games, you could build a park all around some of your favorite video games or your favorite books, favorite characters, whatever you like. Use your imagination. That's what it's for. to make sure I don't miss any of my lines here. Okay, almost done. Oh, my Sharpie's about worn out. <laughs> Good thing I have an extra one. I have that problem a lot. <laughs> Right. Now I've got to do our balloon. I 
I want to go to art world right now. Well, we're kind of in art world, aren't we? <laughs> we're in our own art world. Every time when we hang out together and make art together, we're in, we're in art world. <laughs> Different kind. But I do have, I do want to tell you all how much I really appreciate and enjoy getting to hang out with you every week and make art together. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but um, Palenque Arts is sort of taking the month of July off. A lot, a lot of the instructors and everyone's just taking a little break and they're getting ready to start up all kinds of new, exciting stuff very soon for you guys. But I, and so Mr. Juan said, Paul, you, could, you can take uh, the month of July off if you want. And I said, no, I have to just keep making art with everybody or I will, I'll go crazy. <laughs> so I, that's why I am still here doing this because I, I look forward to this probably as much as you guys do. I love, maybe even more, I don't know. But I just love hanging out with you. I love knowing that you are all out there drawing, being creative. I love seeing your art and just staying connected with everybody. So we're gonna keep doing this for a long time. And I'm really grateful for all, everybody that tunes in each week. I know we have some new people that join us every week. Um, so if you're, this is your first time watching an Art with Mr. Paul, welcome. So glad that you're here. If you wanna see any of the old episodes, there are 14 other videos now, believe it or not. You can see them all on the Palenque Arts YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and look for Palenque Arts and you can watch all of our videos whenever you want, which is kind of cool because sometimes it might be fun to go back and watch your favorite ones again. You might come up with a whole different theme park next time. Okay, I think I got all my lines. <laughs> now I don't have time to color the whole thing, but I am going to color my balloon. I at least want to have a little bit of color on there, and then I might work on it some more later after this video is over too. But put a little bit of color on here just so we can have it. I'll do red, maybe do like kind of rainbow stripes. So do you guys know the order of colors in a rainbow? Starts with red. The next one is, anybody know? It's not that, <laughs> it's orange. You know what comes next? Red, orange, yellow. Then green. Uh oh, I don't have enough stripes. <laughs> I still need two more stripes. What do I do? I'll put the other two colors on the basket. I'll just divide the basket in half. See, we can be creative, especially in art world. <laughs> so it's red, orange, yellow, green, then blue. And the last one is purple. All right, there's Art World, welcome. <laughs> Admission is free, everybody's welcome at Art World. <laughs> you can stay as long as you want and have a magical fun time. <laughs> I, I cannot wait to see your drawings. I hope you are having a whole lot of fun making up your own park. You don't have to be finished just because I am. In fact, I'm going to keep working on mine too even after this video because I have more ideas I want to put in here. So I really, really, really enjoyed hanging out with all of you today. I loved getting to share that book with you. I hope you enjoyed it too. 
and have a wonderful week being creative, making art, and having fun, okay? Until next time, bye-bye, everybody!